Hi, I don't care where you live. There's always good and bad, pros and cons. Today, I'm gonna to talk about what are the good and bad, the pros and cons of living in Silicon Valley. I'm gonna give you the top five of each. That's what we're talking about today, stay tuned. Hi, I'm Annie Baker, realtor here in Silicon Valley. Today, I am gonna tell you what the top five pros and cons are of living here in my humble opinion. Uh, I am a realtor here specializing in selling homes that are in trusts and probate, conservatorships, inherited properties. I also work with regular buyers and sellers too. So today I want to talk to you about what are the five pros and cons of living here in Silicon Valley. I'm going to start with the pros. What are the good things? So number five, we are on the cutting edge of technology. What else is Silicon Valley known for but technology? So we've got it all here. We talk about electric cars, they're everywhere. Talk about the newest app, everybody's talking about. Talk about the newest technology, gadget, we're talking about it, someone has it. I have friends all over the country, all over North America, honestly, and I remember when Uber started and I would talk to them like, oh my gosh, I just took Uber for the first time. How many years ago was that, who knows? And they're like, what, what are you talking about? Um, Alexa. I felt like everybody had Alexa here before half my friends back east did. Grocery delivery. People were ordering their groceries online here probably before most of the people in the other parts of the country. I have friends here that haven't been in a grocery store in years. Talk about convenience. There's electric car charging stations everywhere here. I mean, sometimes I wish I had an electric car just because they have better parking <laughs> spots. Um, but so we're on the cutting edge of technology. It's fascinating. Driving around town, you see the Facebook signs, Google signs, eBay, um, Adobe, all these startups that no one's heard of before. I see their, the signs all over the place. Number four, the culture and diversity here. I mean, I don't remember the last time I walked into a grocery store and didn't hear at least one, if not two other languages. The diversity in restaurants, the diversity in cultural events that we have, I mean, it is a hodgepodge here. We've got lots of different cultures here. Number three, the activities, things to do. I mean, it, I don't even know where to begin, to be honest with you, but sports teams, we've got them all. Football, baseball, basketball, hockey. We also have two minor league teams in Silicon Valley. We've got San Jose Barracudas and the San Jose Giants baseball team. When you want to go to a concert, well, I don't care what kind of concert, what kind of music you like, we have venues coming out the wazoo. We've got outdoor venues from Shoreline to the Mountain Winery, now down to Clola Chance, a winery in Morgan Hill that has outdoor events. We've got SAP where the Sharks play for indoor concerts. Um, it, there's concerts galore, sports galore. Okay, now let's talk about activities. What if you just want to go to the beach, go see the ocean? Huh? We're half an hour to Santa Cruz and Capitola. There's even the amusement park in on the beach in Santa Cruz. You can go up to Half Moon Bay. They have surf competitions. Maverick, it's one of the biggest surf competitions in the world is here every year. Um, oh, did I mention San Francisco? All their events, Broadway shows. San Jose has Broadway shows. Oh, that's right. And then did you want to go skiing? Well, you can do that in a day. We've got some ski hills as close as three hours, Dodge Ridge. We've got Lake Tahoe, one of the best ski resorts in the world. It's four, four and a half hour drive. So seriously, in one day, you could be at the beach and be in the mountains in the snow and do it all in one day and be back home at night. It would be a long day of driving, but you could do it. And I haven't even touched on just the activities if you wanted to go hiking. Um, we've got hiking trails all over. Little lakes, there's Almond and Valley Lake, um, there's Calero, so you can actually take speed boats out on Calero, uh, go water skiing, wakeboarding, the biking, again, don't even know where to start, biking, biking, biking. I mean, sometimes on the weekends, you'll just see hordes of 50 bikers going somewhere together. I mean, and they can go six hours, beautiful trails, whether you're in the hills doing mountain biking or biking on a street bike, the biking is incredible. So activities, honestly, I could do just one video on all the activities you could do, just day trips and half day trips. Oh wait, I didn't even mention wine tasting, craft beer events. 
You get it. There's not a chance you could be bored here. Too much going on is the problem. Number two pro of living here, the jobs. I mean, people, there are so many tech jobs. If you're an engineer, I don't know where else you'd want to be. It's fantastic here. Tons of um, jobs in the tech field. But we also have a shortage of teachers. Nurses are always in demand here. It has one of the lowest unemployment rates in the mid to 2% unemployment rate. So there are plenty of jobs here. What's number one? Number one pro of living in Silicon Valley, my favorite, the weather. I mean, honestly, it is so amazing. I have lived all over the world. I've lived in Finland, Canada, US, from Maui to upstate New York. I've lived in every kind of weather imaginable and you just can't beat it here. It is perfect, perfect year round. Um, and you've heard the droughts in California, so I know we need more rain. In 20, we have actually had quite a bit of rain, but I've seen a lot of times it's rained, it's rained at night, so that's even better. But you're talking um, in the summers, it's typically in the 80s. Of course, we get the odd um, few days there in the upper 90s, maybe in the hundreds, but very rare. It's typically 80s and low 90s, maybe. And at night it cools down, so it's a dry climate, no humidity here. So at night, bring a light sweater or jacket if you're gonna be outside, because it will cool down into the 50s and 60s, uh, which does feel cooler than the East Coast with the humidity. Remember, I've lived there too, so I, I know the difference. Um, and in the winter, I mean, cold days here are in the 50s. People are complaining, like, oh my gosh, it's really cold outside. I ran into a friend at the gym yesterday and I said, oh, I haven't seen you. And he's like, oh my gosh, I'm usually out hiking and biking, but it's too cold today. People, it was 52 degrees. <laughs> so it's very mild here. It can get into the you know, 30s, maybe even the 20s sometimes at night. When it rains, sometimes if it's cool enough in the winter, we do get low elevation of snow. So Silicon Valley is surrounded by some beautiful hillside and we actually get some snow-capped hillsides, which is great. So the weather, fantastic. Number one, that's it guys. Silicon Valley has the best weather, at least in my humble opinion. Okay, so now on to the cons. Boo hoo, nobody likes the bad stuff, but we gotta mention them. So I'm gonna start number five is the stress and competition. It's real here. Uh, a lot of people are running late all the time. They're working long hours. They feel like they never have enough time. And I know that that's a common problem for people in a lot of other areas. I just think it's a, it's a little elevated here. People really get stressed out. You see someone else doing better at work. Someone else has the newest, hottest electric car that you wanna get. It's so competitive for kids in schools. Because of the diversity in the different cultures, sometimes the education can be really demanding on kids. Um, some cultures expect their kids to study at least six days a week, if not seven. So it puts pressure on some of the other cultures that want to have other things to do. So kids feel the stress, parents are stressed. Uh, it's very competitive work-wise, so you have to be on your A game or you can be replaced. Uh, it's getting a little bit better. A lot of companies are trying to find better work-life balance. They are promoting wellness programs in their companies to provide that. A lot of companies also try and have everything you would need on their building campus, from dry cleaning to food that's free, to massage therapists, to the doctors, um, to daycare. So your days can be really long at work. So they kind of want to keep you there all day all the fitness facilities, they can have yoga, exercise classes right at work. So your days might start really early. I'm talking 5.30 in the morning and you might not get home till seven, eight. So there's this real kind of tension and stress in the air for a lot of people. So that's probably con number five. Con number four, oh, this is a touchy one, it's rough, but we really do have a, a big issue with homeless people. Um, it's very common along most freeways here to see little tent cities, kind of tarps, and just a lot of homeless people, little encampments that are set up. They, you know, around shopping centers, you know, asking for food. Uh, and sometimes you have to be really careful because oftentimes they're on drugs. I don't want to stereotype here, and I know there are some 
really sad cases of homeless people that just hit hard times and have found themselves in a situation like that. But unfortunately, there are a lot that have drug and alcohol problems. So there have been times I've heard people walking down the street, minding their own business, and a homeless person comes up and you know punches them or really is kind of aggressive trying to get food or money from them. So it's just something to be aware of. So seeing homeless and homeless encampments around is just part of living in Silicon Valley. Number three, the cost of living is high. And I'm not talking about even housing yet, I'm just talking about everyday living, the cost of living. Um, I mentioned all the good things about all the fun activities of concerts and sporting event tickets and even going wine tasting. Uh, they can be costly here. Tickets are more expensive here. I know some people that have a favorite sports team that will actually fly to another city to see them live because the tickets are cheaper. Uh, going out to restaurants is costly here. Um, food and alcohol is more expensive. Gas, ugh, that's really rough. The gas is expensive here. It's not uncommon to pay, you know, close to $4 for a regular tank of gas. So cost of living is high here. Number two, traffic, since it's traffic in a lot of places, but unfortunately here it is awful. Traffic is bad. And when you talk about rush hour in the morning and rush hour in the afternoon, those hours aren't really just one hour anymore. It's about a three hour window in the morning, not four. Afternoon, three or four hour window, bad traffic. Uh, we have a lot of little downtown areas, downtown Los Gatos, downtown Willow Glen, downtown Campbell, downtown Mountain View, and they can get really jammed as well. So you always have to plan extra time if you're gonna look for parking. You just always have to plan a lot more time for the traffic, but it's part of living in Silicon Valley. So the number one con I would say living in Silicon Valley for a lot of people is the cost of housing. It is rough. Um, Unless you've lived here for a long time, then you're golden because you're sitting on your golden goose egg. But if you're newer, um, renting is expensive. Let's say you just need a one bedroom. You're most likely looking at, you know, minimum 25, 2300, depending on location and the amenities. The median uh, cost of a house is, you know, in the low millions. Um, you can find, you know, a three bedroom, two bath house, uh, depending on the area, you know, high 800,000. But the thing with housing here is it's all pretty much school district driven. So the better the public school district you're in, the higher the housing. And also the closer you are to really the main jobs areas of Silicon Valley. So you're dealing with less traffic, those housing prices are gonna be higher too. So if you're willing to be a little bit more on the outskirts, you can, your money will go further with housing. But guys, did you hear all those, those five pros that I talked about? And I really just scratched the surface on some of the pros, but the con is the houses are expensive here and living is expensive. So there you go. I don't know if I helped you much. Just my personal little opinion on the pros and cons of living here. There's so much great, good, awesome things about here. But like I said, there's always some bad too. So again, my name's Annie, Annie Baker. I specialize in real estate and I just want to be a resource for you. So please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions about the housing here or anything else I talk about. If you like my videos, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button below. And if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And please don't hesitate to comment, ask, ask questions. I'm here to help you. Okay, so until next time, have a great one.